For whatever reason, good dinosaur games seem hard to find. Does a 1998 relic rip that notion apart like a T-Rex tears a Brachiosaurus jugular clean from its throat? Find out in my review of Jurassic Park Trespasser. Maybe by today's standards, Trespasser looks like trash, but in 1998, you needed an advanced PC to handle a large polygon count of vast environments. It's even been credited for inspiring elements of gameplay in Half-Life. Ubiquitous box puzzles barrage the landscape as you look for a way off the breeding grounds of Site B. Players control Anne from a first-person perspective to stumble away from a crashed plane with only one arm intact. Originally planned to be a horror survival game, it was haphazardly shifted into a bare-bones first-person shooter by release date restraints. Really, that's what this review is about, how such a highly anticipated title can go oh so horribly wrong. As Chuck D told us long ago, I understand overzealous programming, but it becomes a problem when deadlines are near and money is no more. Slated to be simultaneously shown alongside the Lost World, the developers lost their way with anxious ambition. More puzzle solving, limited shooting, and ravenous near unstoppable dinosaurs were meant to paranoy the player into pissing his or her pantaloons. The best laid pack hunter plans of a raptor often go awry when a rapid pace is pushed. Rushing is simply another form of hesitation, heavily apparent in all dinos across the land. Instead of narrowly escaping a rampaging rex, one can merely sidestep and witness the most wonky movement mechanics ever encountered. If all else fails, find a hut or a building to hide out in. Not like dinosaurs know how to walk through open doorways, right? Right? Sadly, this is not sarcasm. In all seriousness, not even a near-human height velociraptor can pass the boundary of an open building. Time took away the luxury to code for this, making it one of the most malignantly missed marvels of the game. Why run and gun when you can simply lead the scaly shitheads to the slaughter by standing in the door of the corner store? It smacks down any notion of placing this game in the horror genre. Most unfortunately, the main challenge is not even the dopey doomed bullet sponge dinos. It's the damned invisible Mr. Mime Barriers once more! Not even aiding the player with so much as a HUD, people explore the barren jungle bouncing between invisible walls, wishing either aid could be attained, or an allosaur would attack and end this nightmare. Drilling holes into my cerebral cortex would be far cooler than failing to climb mountains in this simulation. The definitions for how dirt and other rock surfaces react is disastrous to Anne's ascent. You'll spend sometimes over half an hour hoping some other glitch opens the path to the rest of the ridiculous adventure you're on. When finally past all the problems of Glitch Mountain, you start to see another sad factor for this title. Where are all the dinosaurs? For an island exclusively created to breed these creatures, I need to comb the lands ridiculously long to find any of them. I feel this game should have been renamed to Island Aggravation with small text below indicating the small cameos made by a couple of Jurassic Park prehistoric pals. Ambient music is also sorely missing, while the surrounding sounds are muted and murky. One micro plus element to the game's audio is the addition of the actor who played John Hammond randomly recalling his simultaneous success and shutdown of Jurassic Park. I still believe Nedry left himself a backdoor, something about the hobbits or god knows what. Such a shame he didn't foresee his latest failure in prehistoric prodding. The rage runs on when finally finding these fiends, for you see, Anne fears flying. So before her island getaway plane careened into Flatland, she was flushing out her fears with the finest beers. Come on now, on How else can you explain Anne's relatively calm attitude to having her left arm lopped off? Programming issues, that's how. If you thought picking up items with one hand was a pain, try two. Impossible. Even with one arm, adjustment and calibration are catastrophic. Melee items were added, but matter not in the grand scheme of the game. Anytime alcohol-induced Anne bumps against a surface, she relinquishes her grasp. It's gruelingly time-consuming when overgrown lizards can disarm the girl with light grinding. On the plus side, you're able to save at any point in the adventure, 
which is absolutely necessary to play this game. You'll spend most of your time dying to miscalculated jumps, or just screw-ups of Anne dropping her weapon when she had a clear shot. Ultimate ambition accrued an acrid aroma when so much was promised with so little delivered. Entire areas were kiboshed like the geothermal power plant and the extended harbor area. Some say a beautiful sculpture lies already within the stone upon which a chiseler slowly reveals its magnificence by removing the unnecessary bits. Sadly, when the digital sculptors tried this same technique, they turned their masterpiece into rubble. I comprehend the constraints placed on creativity by Kurt Hollywood companies, however, you could have kept your mouth shut about the features that were never coming. Jurassic Park Trespasser is a near unplayable dino scarce wasteland where developers dreams went to die. That's why I give it my custom scale score of toss it in the Bermuda Triangle. Hopefully plate tectonics can terminate Isla Sorna with little tussle. For those still not convinced, I encourage you to check out my full let's play of Trespasser, and if you still cling to hope, there is a glimmer of promise on the horizon. Trescom is a community of trespasser enthusiasts who refuse to let the dream fade. They forged new maps, mods, and glitch patches to make the game more playable. But even with that point mentioned, do you really want to invest your time and hard-earned monies into a game that charges you $31 for something that's not even finished? Well, now I'll let you decide. But if you need some more views, check out my channel, youtube.com backslash DOGENZ, where I share those opinions in reviews, let's plays, and other short fun form videos that you can check out when you subscribe.